Did you know Killer Instinct began as a street punk themed fighter called Brute Force? Lead designer Chris Tilston said, Initially the theme was that of street punks, where the characters are mostly based in reality, like a basketball player for example, but changed to more fantastical characters so that the game would stand out. While coming up with ideas for this planned fighting game, designer Kevin Bayless started experimenting with 3D modeling software on Rare's brand new Silicon Graphics workstation. In 1993, Rare showed Nintendo a tech demo of a boxing game with 3D pre-rendered graphics, and pitched the idea to create a new Donkey Kong game using the same technology. Nintendo was so impressed that they asked to see what else Rare was working on with the 3D style. Rare then showed off some character designs that Bayless had been modeling, and as a result, Nintendo gave Rare the support they needed to develop Killer Instinct. One of the designs was a robotic ninja with a ponytail that was later developed into Fulgore, the character TJ Combo developed out of the boxing game prototype which was also modeled by Bayless. Some of the character designs, specifically Glacius and Cinder, were created after Rare started experimenting with shading and creative effects and the modeling software. It's also rumored that the special effects seen in Terminator 2 Judgment Day and of course the T-1000 were a direct inspiration for the Glacius and Cinder distinct visuals. If true, this would be an amazing coincidence, as actor who played the T-1000, Robert Patrick, starred in 1987's Behind Enemy Lines, which was originally titled Killer Instinct. In an interview at KillerInstinctCentral.com, Kevin Bayless mentioned that Cinder was originally more lava-based than fire-based, and that he had even been considering giving Cinder the ability to swap back and forth between the two modes. Orchid went through drastic changes during development as well. She originally had a red outfit and blonde hair, and went by the names Roxy Rave and then Wanda. Ripter was named Toxin at one point, Spinal was called Argo, and TJ Combo was formally named Mr. Fist. Cinder went through the most changes, with the names Meltdown, Magma, Heat Shade, and Pyrotech. In fact, Cinder's name was being changed up until the 11th hour of development. There is even arcade data voice clips of the famous Killer Instinct announcer saying Heat Shade and Pyrotech. Heat Shade, Pyrotech! Saberwolf is named after one of Rare's earliest successes back when the company was called Ultimate Play the Game. Saberwolf was released on the ZX Spectrum in 1984 and then later on the Game Boy Advance in 2004. Spinal's design, and especially his ending cinematic, are an homage to the skeleton warriors featured in the Ray Harryhausen film Jason and the Argonauts. Spinal's ending shows him storming onto the Hollywood scene and acting in a movie backdrop that looked incredibly similar to one of the sets in the 1963 classic. Idol's ending cinematic is a reference to Blanca's long-lost mother ending cinema from Street Fighter 2, but instead of Idol embracing his mother, he clubs her. Chief Thunder's ending cinematic had been the source of confusion regarding Spinal's backstory. In Spinal's character bio, it states the undead skeleton is over 2,000 years old, recreated with cell regeneration technology by the evil Ultratech Corporation. However, in Chief Thunder's ending, it's implied that Spinal is the warrior chief's missing brother Eagle. The Killer Instinct comic series muddies the water even further when it's revealed that Fulgore is actually Eagle, wearing a cybernetic suit brainwashed by Ultratech. The Killer Instinct arcade cabinet was the first of its kind. It required an entire hard disk drive to store the FMV sequences and CD quality audio. Killer Instinct was promoted as if it ran on Nintendo's Ultra 64 hardware, however this was simply a marketing ploy. In reality, the Killer Instinct arcade boards were custom made and co-designed by Rare and Midway. Animations in the original arcade version were produced using an early motion capture system. The archaic motion capture suit was apparently quite temperamental. Lead designer Chris Tilston stated, they didn't even have the final hardware and that the technology of the suit was still being worked on. When it came to time of capture for Orchid's animations, designer Kevin Bayless told Retro Gamer, Louise Stamper got suited up for some of the Orchid animations so that she could walk like a lady for the cutscenes. I even remember attempting to walk like a woman wearing high heels in the suit, but it looked a little dodgy to say the least. Rare didn't have high hopes for the success of Killer Instinct, especially after the failure a few years earlier of their previous arcade game, Battletoads. But the cutting-edge graphics, unique fighting engine, and outlandish cast made Killer Instinct a massive hit. According to designer Chris Tilston, weekly arcade reports revealed exactly how commercially successful the game was becoming. Although the Killer Instinct arcade machine was highly expensive for its time, some arcades would take over a thousand dollars a week in a single cabinet. It wasn't long before the machines had even paid for themselves. The fighting game crowd embraced the new game wholeheartedly, but a few serious game-breaking exploits were discovered by these new fans. The bugs and glitches could be attributed to a rumor that the two main playtesters for Killer Instinct absolutely 
absolutely despised fighting games. The most famous exploit, of course, belongs to Cinder, who could easily perform an infinite combo that could not be broken. The issue got so out of hand that a ROM update had to be issued for the game, and back in 1994, Nintendo had to send a team to manually travel and install the update to every single Killer Instinct machine, all 17,000 of them. That's all for today, but don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming and follow Did You Know Gaming on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you also check out DidYouKnowGaming.com, and if you liked the video, check out some of the other videos. And if you're looking for fighting game updates or a huge variety of Killer Instinct coverage, come check out my channel at YouTube.com slash Miles923 for daily fighting game videos. 